Hey everyone, uh, so in this video we're going to just go over um, a bit of a test review ahead of your fractions and decimals test which will be coming up not too long from now. Um, and then after that I have set up one practice problem um, involving multiple operations uh, for fractions and decimals. So far I haven't um, heard anything regarding extra stuff um, that you guys want. So what I'll do is I'll go through this one example of fractions and decimals where you have to do more than one operation in the same question. Um, and then I think that'll basically be it. If I get a little bit more time over the weekend, I might put out a bit of like a supplementary video. Um, with more practice problems, but uh, for now I'll just sort of briefly run through um, a few things that you should make sure you, you study and maybe if anything comes up of things that you should be careful of um, when it comes time for the test. Uh, I'll point those things out now and then uh, we'll do that one example involving more than one operation in the same question and it'll be everything uh, it'll be as hard as the, the hardest thing on your test. So everything on the test will be easier than this question or at most the level of difficulty of this one particular question. Hopefully the fraction to decimal conversion stuff is um, making some sense now that we've had another video of practice questions on that stuff. But uh, this one is just one type of example that we didn't really cover in detail which is um, dealing with m more than just two fractions and one operation between them. So this problem is going to be three fractions and two operations and we're going to have to be a little bit more careful when we're working through that. But um, what I'll do first is I'll just give you a brief rundown of topics that you should cover. So um, I could have made this all one point. I'll sort of separate it into two points. Um, I'm going to say the first one is addition and subtraction involving fractions. Um, and then the second point, very closely related, is multiplication and division involving fractions. Multiplication and division involving fractions. Point number three, um, let's see if I can tilt this down a little bit so that I can make sure you guys can see this. Point number three is converting fractions to decimals. And vice versa. So converting fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions and vice versa. So, um, that might look like an R. There. Okay, so converting fractions to decimals and vice versa. So those are the three main topics that we covered in this unit. So nothing um, particularly surprising here, I hope. Uh, we started by talking about what fractions are. I might, I haven't decided yet, I haven't made the test yet, but um, I haven't decided I might have a little section on just you know identify whether this fraction is proper improper or mixed just you know like with the the names of the different types of fractions uh, which was on uh, your first fractions assignment uh, I might put a section like that I might not bother because that was just to make sure that you guys are familiar with the terminology um, it's not really important for when you're working through a problem as long as you understand what I mean when I'm saying proper improper and mixed um, then if you see that in the instructions for the question that you know make sure you do this to the mixed number then you should understand what type of fraction that is but other than that it's not uh, it's not worth your time in a test on you know actually doing math with these things to be circling proper improper or mixed as the answer to a question right so um, so your first topic is addition and subtraction involving fractions. Things to watch out for is that in addition and subtraction of fractions, you do need 
a common denominator. So that's something that people tend to uh, forget or get confused by, is that sometimes you need a common denominator and sometimes you don't. And so for addition and subtraction of uh, fractions, you do need to get a common denominator before you can proceed with the rest of the problem. Now, you might be wondering, hopefully not, but you might be wondering, I might as well clarify, um, that, you know, we covered multiple ways to add and subtract fractions, right? We did two different methods. One was converting every fraction into an improper fraction, and the other was if you have, um, this is, of course, specifically for mixed numbers, you've got the two ways of dealing with it, right? One is convert everything into an improper fraction, get the common denominator and add them. And the other way is to, if you've got a mixed fraction, um, deal with the whole numbers separately and then deal with the fractions separately and stick the two results together. Um, that was for addition. And for subtraction, um, you could either turn your mixed numbers into improper fractions or you could do that borrowing method where you cut down the number of whole numbers and add it to the fractional component and then deal with the whole number separately and the fraction separately and stick the result together. So um, on the test, hopefully I don't forget this when I'm making the test, but on the test I'm not going to ask you to solve any question in a specific way. I will ask you to show your work, so if I'm asking you to add two fractions together, I will ask you to show your work, maybe I'll say include a diagram. If I'm saying draw what two-fifths of a pizza looks like, or draw what five-eighths of a chocolate bar looks like. I might ask you to draw out a little picture, just because we did some stuff with pictures, but just be prepared to sort of visually describe what it is that the question is asking. And that's not just because, you know, I'm asking you for it on the test, but it'll be because it's something that'll benefit you. If you can uh, tackle a math problem um, after drawing a diagram, Sometimes that helps you understand, you know, the significance of your result or maybe a connection that you didn't see before. So that kind of stuff can come from a diagram. So I might ask you uh, in one or two places to include a diagram. I might go back on that and just take that back and, uh, and not ask you anything like that. But be prepared um, to include a diagram like that. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to ask you to answer the addition or subtraction problem in a specific way. I want you to show your work, and if showing your work in involves a diagram, then great. If not, don't worry about it. But I want you to show me the steps of turning your mixed number either into an improper fraction or show me that you're dealing with the mixed numbers here, or uh, with the whole numbers here and the fractions over there. I want you to communicate that, uh, you know, this is my thought process to get from the problem to the solution. Um, uh, but other than that, I'm not going to say, you know, you must solve it specifically this way because different methods work for different people. So I'm not going to be particular about how you have to answer the question. I'm just going to be particular on you should uh, get in the habit of showing your work. So I will emphasize that um, when, I, when I make that test is that uh, you need to show your work um, in order to, to get full marks. Um, but other than that, for addition and subtraction, the main thing is that you need that common denominator and practice both methods just because, you know, it, if you if you know one way really, really well, try the other one a little bit. But because I'm not asking you to an answer a problem in a specific way, uh, you can just get really comfortable if you, if you know one of the two methods really well and you just want to be completely comfortable with that one, go ahead. I might set up the question so that it's perhaps easier to do one method over the other, but ultimately it'll be your choice and the test won't be insanely hard or anything. So um, so don't stress out too much about uh, you know being able to do absolutely everything that we've covered, but be comfortable with at least one method for addition and subtraction. And then for multiplication and division, I want to point out you don't need a common denominator. So no common denominator is necessary um, for multiplication and division. Um, of course, remember that division problems, we basically turn them into uh, multiplication problems. So if you can do multiplication, you can basically do division. 
uh, and just remember that for multiplication and division also uh, we do convert our mixed numbers into improper fractions was sort of the, the best and easiest way in my opinion to solve a problem uh, involving multiplication or division with mixed numbers if you know a different way that gets you the right answer go for it as long as you show your work I'm fine with it um, but otherwise remember that for multiplication and division um, convert your mixed numbers to improper fractions I don't have any space uh, for that but uh, maybe make a note uh, on the side of your page that that's one key difference between multiplication and division and addition and subtraction is we lose that little bit of flexibility unless of course you have another way that you prefer to solve these things uh, the last thing converting fractions to decimals and converting decimals to fractions uh, the problems won't be unlike the ones that we did uh, going through our practice you might have some numbers that are less than one so like proper fractions or decimals where the number before the decimal point is a zero. You might have quantities larger than one, so maybe a mixed number or an improper fraction. I could give you either of those. Or I could give you a decimal like uh, like pi. I mean, I wouldn't give you exactly pi because we can't write it as a fraction, but I could give you a decimal where the first number, the number before the decimal point, isn't zero, right? I could give you one point something or three point something uh, and then ask you to convert that into a fraction. But I was thinking about it, and based on the stuff that we've covered so far, we've sort of covered all our bases um, for converting fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. The only thing we could do is make the numbers bigger, make the examples a little bit harder, but I don't want to give you such complicated examples um, but, uh, now because they won't prepare you for the test. I don't want to make the test questions super long because then you'll be struggling to finish in the, in the short class period. So um, so I figure what I'll do instead is I'll do the hardest possible fraction question that I could give you, which is a whole bunch of mixed numbers and two operations being done in the same question. So uh, I don't think there's anything else that sort of stands out from these three topics. Uh, if you have any doubts about any of those, always you know you can go back and re-watch old lessons, but if you want me to make a new video on any of these topics over the weekend I'd be happy to set aside some time I don't yet know about hosting a live stream I might be able to but I will do my best to keep you guys posted on that I also don't quite know right now um, if you guys are right on par with where I am with these videos or if you're one or two videos behind in which case you know we'll have to sort of restructure and reschedule things uh, a little bit. Um, but without further ado, now that we've gone through these three things, if you have any questions, you guys have my email and stuff, so get in touch with me if you have any questions that I haven't answered about the format of the test. It won't be unlike the other tests that you've had, and by now you guys have a pretty decent idea of what my tests are like, so hopefully there are no surprises there. So we'll just finish off, we'll do this one uh, problem. Uh, involving fractions and then that'll be it for this video so the problem at hand is three and a half plus four and one seventh divided by two and three fifths that's the question all right so what we want to do is we want to express this as a single fraction in lowest terms preferably and if it turns out to be an improper fraction then turn it back into a mixed number so what we'll start with is I might have to do this in pieces and then get an answer and erase some stuff but we'll go through it so according to the order of operations bed mass remember B stands for brackets E is for exponents D is division M is multiplication A is addition S is subtraction we might have worked a little bit with this before but uh, just remember that division and multiplication are sort of interchangeable. You just sort of do them in order, left to right, as you see them. And addition and subtraction are interchangeable. Now, in this problem, we have division and we have addition. But we have no multiplication, we have no subtraction, no exponents, and no brackets. So, if we just look at the order of operations, we have to do this division right here 
first, and then we can do the addition over there uh, a little bit later. So we'll start by doing this division of 4 and 1 7 divided by 2 and 3 fifths. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert both of those mixed numbers into improper fractions. So we'll put an equal sign and I'll keep the 3 and 1 half here and I'll keep the plus sign. But now we're focused on these two terms over here. So to convert uh, 4 and 1 7 into an improper fraction, which might also be something that you should practice for the test just because it'll be useful in multiplication and division problems. Um, to convert this, we're going to take our denominator, multiply that by our whole number, that's 7 times 4 is 28, add our numerator, plus 1, that's going to be 29, and then we keep the denominator the same. So we've turned 4 and 1 seventh into 29 over 7, right there. So that's converting that mixed number into an improper fraction. And we're going to do the same thing with that second fraction over there. We'll keep the division sign for now. 5 times 2, that's denominator times whole number. 5 times 2 is 10. Add the numerator, 10 plus 3 is 13. So we've got 13, and then our denominator will still be 5. The denominator that we had before just carries over into the next line. Now, we still haven't actually done the division. We've only gotten a step of the way, which is converting those mixed numbers into improper fractions. So let's go ahead and deal with this division. So once again, I'm going to leave this 3 and a half here, and uh, we're going to go through this. Now, to do this division problem, we're going to keep that first fraction the same. This 29 over 7 will stay the same. We're going to flip the second fraction so that it's 5 over 13 and we'll put a multiplication sign in the middle. Remember, to do a division problem, we're going to flip that second fraction and then change the division sign into multiplication. So now we can go ahead and do this multiplication right in here. Right? Multiplication is going to happen before addition as well, according to the order of operations. E, D, M, A, S. We've got multiplication before addition. So we'll do this multiplication over here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be numerator times numerator. We can't reduce anything because all four of those numbers are prime. Um, so nothing can reduce. So we'll do uh, numerator times numerator. That'll be 29 times 5, which should be 145. 5 times 9 is 45. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14. So our new numerator there will be 145. So we've got 3.5 plus and then from this multiplication we get our new numerator to be 145 and our denominator will be 13 times 7 which should come out to be 91 I believe 13 times 7 7 times 3 is 21 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9 yeah 91 so 91 is going to be our denominator alright hopefully that uh, is making sense we've gone from converting our mixed numbers to improper fractions changing that division problem into a multiplication problem, and now actually doing the multiplication. Now here, because we have an improper fraction, I could, if I wanted to, I could convert this into a mixed number, but I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction because I don't really care about whether we have a whole number and then a smaller numerator, or if we have a really big numerator with no whole number. All I care about right now is the fact that we're doing an addition problem and we have two different denominators. So first, I'm going to deal with those denominators. If you want, you could convert this into a mixed number because then the numerator uh, that you have to adjust when you're finding the common denominator, um, the numerator that you end up having to adjust will be a smaller number. But the way I was solving this earlier, I just kind of left it the way it was. So I'm going to leave it the way uh, I have it right now, and we'll convert things from improper to mixed uh, later on as necessary. So I'm going to get rid of this line here, and we'll put in the next line of the solution right there. So we'll slot it into the space here. So, 3.5 plus 145 over 91. Now that's a little bit of a problem because we need a common denominator there. And that common denominator will be the LCM, lowest common multiple, of 2, our first denominator, and 91, our second denominator. Um, now, since those numbers are prime, they don't share any um, 
uh, well, actually, that's not going to help us with common factors won't help us because we can't reduce anything. But uh, it's they're both prime numbers, which means that there's no chance that 91 is going to be a multiple of uh, 2. So it's not going to be uh, that I only have to adjust the 2 and that I can leave the 91 the way it is. So what I'll do is I'll write this out, 291, we just go ahead and find the LCM. And in this case, it's going to actually just come out to be both denominators multiplied together. The smallest prime number that we can fit right now is 2. So we'll have a 1 there and a 91 over there. And then the next prime number that we can fit, we can go ahead and try this, is going to be 91, which leaves us with 1 and 1. So our LCM will be 91 times 2, which should give us 182. So our LCM there, I hope you can see this, our LCM there is going to be 182. So that means I can rewrite um, this fraction. I'm going to get rid of this line as well, just so that you don't get confused with where we are steps-wise. So that means I can rewrite these fractions. So we've got 3 as our whole number still, and then we've got a denominator of 182 over here, and we need to figure out the numerator and a denominator of 182 over there. Now, for this first one, in order to turn this denominator of a 2 into 182, I had to multiply it by, I'm going to actually have to get rid of the question as well, uh, I'm going to have to multiply that denominator of 2, so we had 1 half as the fraction that we're dealing with, is equal to something over 182. Now I had to multiply this 2 by 91 to get to 182 on the bottom. So if I do that in the denominator, I have to do that to the numerator as well. So that means I'm going to have 91 as my numerator because this fraction here is equivalent to 1 half, but we need that denominator of 182 for this to work. So uh, now we have to do the same thing for the other fraction. And we need to find the numerator. We need to figure out what we're multiplying things by. Um, but here our fraction is a bit more complicated. This fraction is the second one we were dealing with, so that's 145 over 91. And to convert that into a, a fraction with a denominator of 182, well, for our denominator here, we just doubled it. 91 times 2 is going to give us 182. And on top, we're going to have to do the same thing. And so that should give us 200 and 90, which you can always go ahead and check if you're not sure. 145 times 2, 2 fives are 10, 2 fours are 8, plus 1 is 9, 2 times 1 is 2, that's 290. So we can rewrite that over here. So we've got 290 over 182. Cool. Moving on. Now we just need to go ahead and add these together. We've got our whole number 3. And then we've got two fractions with a common denominator. So let's go ahead and simply add those. So I'm going to get rid of this now as well. Uh, we're sort of just going step by step now. We want to just add this now. So we're going to have 3 plus whatever that's going to be. So it's going to be 3 plus 91 over 182 plus 290 over 182. So we can deal with these fractions now and add them together. And that's going to give us, so this 3 stays, and we've got 3 plus, and that's going to be 290 plus 91 should be 381 over 182. All right, so now we've got 3 plus this huge thing, 381 over 182. Now we want to convert that back into a mixed number. You could try to do this with long division, but you're going to end up sitting with 381 over 182. That's not going to be particularly helpful. So what we'll do is um, we'll say 182, that's roughly 180. So if I double that, that's going to be roughly 360. My answer should come out to roughly 360, which is still smaller than 381. So I have a hunch that I can make two whole you know, pizzas. If each pizza is cut into 182 slices, and I have 381 slices, I have a feeling that I could reconstruct two full pizzas and then have something left over. So that's just my idea for what our whole number is going to be. My guess is that it'll be two. But let's go ahead and check. We'll do 182 
times two to see if we can fit two holes in these 381 slices to see if there are enough slices for us to reconstruct two holes. Doing this multiplication will tell us how many slices we need to get two whole pizzas. So two times two is four, two times eight is 16, two times one is two plus one is three. So 364 slices would give us two holes. So basically what I'm saying is 364 over 182 is equal to two, is what I'm telling you. So if we only had 364 as our numerator, then this whole fraction would simplify down to be just uh, two. But we don't have 364, we've got 381. So what we have right now is basically we've got three plus 364 over 182, we know that much. Um, and then what's left? Well, we started with 381, and I've accounted for 364 of those. And that's going to leave me with, if I do the subtraction a long way, 11 minus 4 is 7, 7 minus 6 is 1. That'll leave me with 17 extra slices, 17 over 182. So what I've done is I've just broken this 381 into some multiple of my denominator so that I can, in the next step, I can turn this whole thing into just a whole number and then whatever my leftover piece is um, as a fraction. So 364 over 182, that's going to just be 2. So in the next line, I can write this as equal sign right here. 3 plus 2 plus 17 over 182. Alright, and that will allow us now, we've got our fraction over there. Is the, that's the only fraction we have. The last thing we have to do is deal with these whole numbers that we have over here. And so if we just go ahead and add those together, we'll get our final answer. So we've got five, and then because it's just now one whole number and one fraction, I'm not gonna put a plus sign, I'm just gonna stick it together. Five and 17 over 182. So that would be your final answer for this problem. We reduced it to lowest terms, 17 is a prime number, and uh, I don't believe that this is a multiple of that. No, 170 would be a multiple of that. So 182 is not a multiple of 17, so we can't reduce that fraction anymore. And we've reduced it to lowest terms. We converted it into a mixed number. All of that good stuff is done. So this right here would be your final answer. Now, on the test, I would construct such a question so that your denominators are easier to deal with but you could expect to see something with a couple of mixed numbers and maybe a proper fraction and then I'm asking you to do two operations like multiply and subtract or add and divide like this example um, but yeah that might be you know the last question on the test the bonus question something like that um, but the rest of the problems should all be easier than this for uh, arithmetic with uh, with fractions and um, then there'll be a little bit of conversion between fractions and decimals in both directions, so make sure you can do it both ways. But other than that, that should be your entire test. I'm gonna try not to make it overly long. It'll just be a couple of examples of each, or a couple of questions on each, so a little bit of adding and subtracting, a little bit of multiplying and dividing, some small, simple examples perhaps of dealing with um, uh, multiple operations in the same question, like I might have three fractions but it'll all be addition and subtraction. So you just get your common denominators and there'll be one extra step. But it won't be anything uh, overly difficult and everything on the test should come out to be much, much easier than this last problem uh, and definitely no harder than this last problem that we've done just now. But other than that, you guys know how to reach me. So uh, if you have any questions or you want extra practice or something like that, let me know and I can make new videos. I could make you worksheets. I can clarify your doubts via email, um, anything that works. Um, so just let me know. But if there are no further questions, then good luck on the test, and I will see you at the beginning of our next unit. Have a good one.